So, Mark, I'm speaking to you in Melbourne, Australia. What's the context of the coronavirus there and, and what are the challenges that you're finding? I think across the society as a whole, we have learnt more fully what should have been self-evident to us beforehand, which is that we live in an economic and political structure that is fundamentally unequal. And if we have learned anything about this, uh, 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 about our, our way of living together, is that we, we don't live together in any equal measure. This virus has impacted on casual workers. It has impacted on migrants. It has impacted on refugees. It has impacted uh, women far more greatly than, uh, than men, than those who have been here for generations. Uh, we have seen a significant increase in levels of uh, domestic violence uh, because women have not had the opportunity in this lockdown experience to leave home, to find shelter elsewhere. And so I think what we're starting to see writ large is the fundamental inequities within society. And certainly the government and even the ecclesial responses to those inequities have tried to level the playing field, as it were. Um, and that has been successful to an extent. I think one of the concerns I have going forward, uh, there's, there's a lot of talk at the moment about when we get through this, when we get to the other side, we will enter into some sort of new normal. We will somehow emerge into a society that is kinder, that is more tolerant, that is fairer, that is more equitable. And I think some of those expressions of hope are built upon the type of um, observable expressions of kindness and charity that we see walking around the suburbs day by day. Uh, we see people uh, putting uh, teddy bears in the windows so that young children walking across, walking around the, the suburbs can see at least something that's happy and pleasant. We, uh, we see uh, primary school teachers, for example, chalking um, hot scotch on the sidewalks or, or, or riddles or cartoons on the pavements just to provide a sense of um, colour and, and life and livelihood. Um, and I think those sorts of neighbourly expressions of kindness and, and care um, perhaps lull us into a false sense of security that on the other side of this we will somehow inevitably become a fairer and kinder and more tolerant society. I think what I'm concerned about is that we will assume that that will happen organically, that that will happen naturally, uh, rather than it having to be a set of intentional day-by-day -day decisions that we each make constantly in order to retain and sustain the more equitable, the kinder society that we have started living into over the last few weeks and months. So I suppose uh, the natural follow-up question is, well, how do you get there? So you're, you're, I recognise the, the, uh, uh, the image of people being kinder, a sense of community, a sense of neighbourhood, a sense of being in this together. Uh, I have that here in Cambridge, as you do in Melbourne. The question is, after it's all over, as you say, after you've got down that mountain on the other side of that curve, what do you need to put in place to retain that sense of, um, that sense of kindness? I think predominantly that has to be um, um, modelled by those who are in leadership positions, whether that be politically, economically, culturally or religiously. Um, one of the things I am very conscious of as a member of the Anglican Church of Australia 
is that we have spent an inordinate amount of time over the last um, few years debating matters that mean a great deal to us internally, but very little to people outside the walls of the church. Uh, one of the things I was uh, going to be doing in the middle of this year was heading off to our National Synod, uh, which of course now has had to be cancelled. And I know from the papers that had already been distributed that we were going to be spending a great deal of time debating questions around sexuality and marriage equality, so on and so forth. All of those social issues that have taken up so much of our time and energy uh, within the church and with, within society at large, uh, the, the church, I think, needs to realise that these are issues on which the rest of society has already moved on. One of the things that has been very noticeable here in Australia over the last few months is the gathering together of what has been called a national cabinet. That is, all of the premiers of each of the states have been meeting weekly with the Prime Minister beyond party political lines to try and address the coronavirus pandemic and, and its impacts upon this country uh, in ways that move beyond political tit for tat. That has been a very obvious way in which those horizons have been lifted beyond ourselves. And I think if we're going to live into a more tolerant and caring society, we need to break out of that insularity which comes so naturally to us. Mark Lindsay, thank you very much.